Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a tutorial, uh, getting ready tutorial, and uh, in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how you can avoid jamming. Jamming, basically, what it is, is that uh, whatever the signal is being transmitted, you're going to send exactly the same signal on that same frequency, but uh, that include noise. So what it will do, it will try to corrupt your channel. Now, uh, the electronic countermeasure that we normally take is to, to avoid jamming, which means you're going to hop at different frequencies. You're going to transmit at uh, small, um, in a small sequence, and then you're going to hop it to a different channel. If someone has tried to jam that channel, it's going to hop to another channel, and so on. And this is the underlying technology behind Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth uses frequency hopping spectrum. So I'm going to try to simulate that scenario for you uh, using this uh, GNU radio tutorial to, to, to provide electronic countermeasures, which is to avoid jamming. In order for me to do that, my flow graph is quite simple. Uh, I also made a video on this uh, using my hack RF, where I use my hack RF to jam a signal. So in this video, I'm going to try to generate a signal. And based on that signal, I'm going to try to avoid jamming by hopping to different, different channels. Uh, that's the key idea behind this uh, tutorial, to avoid jamming. In order for me to do that, um, the flow graph is quite simple. I have a signal source right here. Uh, let me zoom in. Uh, that signal source is generating a 32 kilohertz of sample rate. That's my sample rate, which is a default value. Uh, I also imported a random function. I'll show you why did I import that random function in this. Uh, frequency is 150 hertz, and then I have an amplitude. It's going into a throttle block. I'm transmitting this signal uh, using NB, narrowband FM transmit. Uh, quadrature, some of the values that you normally see, they are default values. Let me just show you anyhow. When you open this up, sample rate is your normal audio sample rate, which is 32 kilohertz, and quadrature rate is around interpolation rate. So basically what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to interpolate my signal. So I have a variable which is right here. That is the value of 10. 10 times 32 would give me 32 kilo, uh, um, kilo samples, quadrature rate. Tau value, maximum deviation value. This is available in the documentation. Cent um, documentation. So I just simply use these values which are default values. Uh, so that's the idea behind this. So this is being modulated using NBFM. Now it's going to an FF FFT filter. Now this is just like a normal filter. Uh, you can use a low pass filter as well. But when you have a lot of tabs uh, in your filter, uh, you can use FFT filter, which works quite nicely uh, since it's a decimation filter, which means I'm using it as a low pass filter. Uh, just open this up, uh, TX tabs, uh, transmitting tabs. These tabs are defined right here uh, in this block, in this variable block. If you can clearly see, uh, let's just quickly look at it. The sample rate is still 3320 kilo samples. Uh, gain is still default value, which is one. Cutoff frequency here is 20, uh, 20 kilohertz, and transition bandwidth is somewhere around 10 kilohertz. These are the two values which you need to set. Sample rate, uh, sample rate, cutoff frequency, and transition rate. These are just the values that you need to put. All the rest of the values are the same. Now, this signal is being multiplied together, which is being, the, it's mixed. So you have NBMFM transmitter signal, which is going to a transmitter. And then it's going to a channel selector right here, which is being multiplied together. Let's just look at it. Uh, okay, so I have a frequency. So this, the, this signal, which is 150 hertz, is being mixed with a 30 kilohertz signal. My sample rate is still, you can see, is 30, 320 kilohertz because my original sample rate, which is given in the variable block right here, it's somewhere around 32, 32 kilo. So this is being multiplied by 10, so it's 320. So this, whatever is coming out, 320 is coming out, 320 is coming out. So you gotta keep track of your sample rate in each block. All right, so it's going into a channel block, which is a channel chooser right here. Uh, so this is just some value, which is 0, 1, 2, 3. So whatever my frequency is, is going to be multiplied by this, which is, uh, if it's 30 kilohertz, which in our case is 30 kilohertz times channel. So that value is going to be 30 times 0 will give me 0. 
uh, 30 times 1 would give me 30, 30 times 2 would give me 60, 30 times 3 would give me 90, and then so on at negative frequencies. So in this, I just label it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is how I just, just label it. So in my chooser block, you will see that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there are eight values, uh, some negative values and some positive values. In order for me to randomly choose my channel uh, by importing a random function in my GNU radio block, which is right here, um, you can call a function called random, random dot rand integer from negative four to four, because my values are from negative four to four. So I have used that function. This will automatically select my channel number. All right, once this is done, this is being multiplied together. Now, it's going into an adder block. So this modulated signal is going to an adder block. This adder block, the output of this adder block, I, I'll go through with these two inputs. Uh, but this will go into your frequency sync and this will go into your waterfall sync. Uh, these are the two, th two things that you would see. All right. Also, something is else is being added, uh, which is a Gaussian source, uh, which is a noise source. So just look at it. You can just simply uh, go here and search for noise source. You will find that noise source right here uh, and along here. So it's just a Gaussian source, which means it's going to have a Gaussian profile. That has an amplitude of 0 0.01. Now, this is also directly going into it, just to show you that there is a noise floor. That's why I have written down simulated noise floor. Now, now the next thing is going to be uh, that I'm going to actually perform jamming. So this is my basic signal, which is going into my adder block. Now I need to provide some type of a jamming signal. Now this jamming noise, noise source, which is right here, which is your jammer in input signal, that is a Gaussian signal. And this amplitude is called J power. Uh, so this is a variable right here. This variable is called right here jammer power which is going from 0 the starting value is 0 default value is 0 0 to 10 and it has a step size of 0 0.1 of course this is going into a filter as well because if you were to look at the profile the noise is going all the way up and down up and down up and down i want to limit it for that i'm using an fft filter uh, which is just another tabs j tabs which is a jammer tab which is defined with respect to its cutoff frequency and right here uh, it's cutoff frequency and its transition bandwidth these are the two parameters that you need now this signal is being multiplied together with a cold signal and this is that random jam jammer ch channel selection that is also selecting it as you can clearly see 30 times e to the 3 times random it will choose choose a random integer from those random value from a channel block and it will multiply that value with 30 kilohertz so it will provide that uh, random selection of your channel both of these signals are multiplied together and added into this block and the output uh, so you can mix it uh, into your actual so this signal which is randomly being chosen which is your channel selection is being actually chosen and is being multiplied with noise using the noise source right here right here uh, so the output of this is being added here this is just to simulate the noise floor and the output it can be visualized using uh, frequency sync and your waterfall sync. Uh, now let's just quickly simulate this graph. Let me just simply run this. All right. All right. As you can clearly see right now, my jamming power is somewhere around uh, zero. Uh, let me just not play around with this. Uh, let me just simply zoom out and I can show you this. So right now the jamming power is zero because in my variable I have chosen my default value and my starting value to be zero. And this is the signal which is being transmitted. Now, you know, so the other thing that is happening is actually a random channel selection. So this channel right now is chosen to be one. So 30 times one is going to be 30 kilohertz. This one should be, lie, should be lying somewhere around 30 kilohertz. Indeed it is 30 kilohertz. And uh, so this is my signal. As you can clearly see, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Eight different signals, uh, eight different channels. So now let's provide some noise, jammer noise. Now, it starts jamming this signal. As you can clearly see, you can, uh, because, the Gaussian, because of this Gaussian profile, this is actually taking over 
this entire spectrum. Now in frequency hopping spectrum spectrum is or anti-jamming circuits, what it does is that once signal is getting jammed, it's going to hop onto a different channel or hop onto a different frequency. So with the help of my channel, I can just simply go to channel number two. This now you can clearly see that this channel has moved to this position. Now I can go to channel number three. Now this is totally right here. Even though the person is trying to jam this signal, but my signal has moved at this point. So this on your waterfall fall graph, you can clearly see that signal was being jammed, uh, but I can just simply hop on to different frequencies. Then I can just simply go here, go to channel four, it's gonna hop back on. Uh, since if you remember it from zero, one, two, three, those are positive frequency channels and at negative frequencies you're moving towards a negative spectrum so it's basically going back and forth so you can just randomly select it's going to two now it's going to three and so on so in this way this is actually what electronic countermeasure system do that when someone is trying to jam a channel they will try to avoid that channel by hopping it to a different uh, frequencies and this is the underlying protocol in uh, bluetooth uh, systems. Bluetooth does that uh, 1500 hops per second and each has a bandwidth about 79 hops and um, and each has a bandwidth of about 1 megahertz. So it's just continuously hopping. So something that is hopping around it's hard to actually jam that thing unless and until you jam an entire band. But when you're trying to jam a particular frequency uh, you can use uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum to avoid jamming. Uh, now just to show you if you remember it uh, from the beginning, it has chosen channel number one. Using a RAND function, let me just rerun this flow graph again. Once I rerun this flow graph again, it will randomly choose uh, a channel. So now it is choosing channel number two. Before that, it was choosing, I believe, channel number one. So now it has chosen channel number two. That is a frequency of about 60 kilohertz because 30 times two would give me 60 kilohertz. Uh, and let's try to do ch channel number three. Channel number three was transmitting 30 times three would give me about 90 kilohertz. Now when I try to jam this signal, I start jamming that signal because it's also moving along with that, but you can start hopping it from one frequency to another frequency, and then you can still continue to transmit your signal. So uh, that's the idea behind uh, these electronic counter measure systems, which uh, provide, uh, would try to avoid jamming. And this is what uh, frequency hopping surge spectrum do. So I hope you like this small tutorial on anti-jamming circuits or anti-jamming uh, simulation, which is based on software-defined radio. The cool thing about software-defined radio is that you can actually use and you can connect in hardware, which I'll probably show you in another video, and you can actually do that. So this is one way of starting something that provides anti-jamming. Probably the next thing is actually to do it automatically. Uh, which is this is just to show you that uh, manually I can hop from one channel to another channel to avoid jamming so if you have any questions uh, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel